G'day, chaps. Tis I, Clumpuncher139. Arkham Knight's DLC wasn't exactly my favorite purchase in recent times, but at the same time, I can't really argue with only four bucks. So, what better way to celebrate them still being in my Xbox library than by making a challenge out of them? I don't know, you clicked on the video and I needed something I could record quickly, so here we are. This is every Arkham Knight DLC story without grappling. For this challenge, I must beat Matter of Family, Flip of a Coin, GCPD Lockdown, and the Red Hood Story Pack without using any of the Bat Family's grapple guns. Can't count Catwoman or Harley because they don't have grapple guns, or Season of Infamy because it's in the main game and I don't want to. If you disagree with me excluding them, deal with it. Because I don't have the time to record and write for all of them. This script is already 8 pages long, I'm only one man, and my family can't help but keep me away from my workstation for nearly the entire summer. Anyway, let's get to the challenge, starting with the least difficult and working our way up to the most. Starting off our challenge incredibly easily, we have the Red Hood Story Pack. Unlike all the other packs, this one has absolutely no traversal and is mostly combat. The only section that provides even the tiniest bit of challenge is the Singular Predator Room. And even then, its difficulty is thrown completely out the window with the inclusion of guns. Since you can shoot more than half the enemies down and only have to get in close for a few specific thugs, this predator room is a complete joke. Plus, it's very open and there's very little verticality to the area, so taking out enemies that go up high is never a problem. Heck, I took most of these guys down in a single area with a few grates, it was that easy. And that's the only time the grapple gun is even brought into question for use, so we can move on to the next pack with absolutely no troubles and no grapples. Sorry for being so quick, Red Hood, maybe your pack should have been a little bit longer. To my surprise, coming up next in terms of difficulty is my least favorite pack, GCPD Lockdown. I thought this one would be ridiculously difficult because of Nightwing's incredibly limited movement options, and the fact that we have a giant, multi-leveled predator room to deal with. But it was mostly a cakewalk. However, we do have to start with a small puzzle at the docks. We need to power up these fuse boxes to take out the thugs, and the intended way to do it is to grapple onto this ledge so you can see all three. They supposedly power down too quickly to get them all on the ground, so challenge over, right? LEFT! If you're quick and precise enough with your movements, you can hit these two with quickfire attacks, then dive over to get the third in sight and shoot it just before the boxes shut down. I will admit, it was pretty satisfying. Then I saw a funny glitch where Tiny just kinda hung out in full view of the tank despite not being supposed to spawn until after the encounter when you get close. Kinda weird, but whatever, it doesn't matter. What does matter is the upcoming Predator encounter. I thought this was going to be an absolute pain in the keister, but it really wasn't that bad. I just did what I would normally do and stuck to the grates, only going up via the stairs or the outdoor ladders. Even the minigunner wasn't hard to take care of, as I just used an air unit to instantly incapacitate him. The rest were taken out with a combination of silent and fear takedowns, again, usually utilizing the vents. It certainly wasn't fast, but it was effective, and I got the job done. Then, to finish the pack off, we have to actually get back on the roof. But it's as simple as taking the stairs all the way to the top floor, then jumping to the furthest beam in the area. Nightwing has just a far enough jump to be able to climb onto the beam, so that was an absolute relief. You can then crawl all the way across the beam onto the roof and climb your way to the final combat section. Very easy stuff. Coming in second place, we have Flip of a Coin, which, again, wasn't really that hard, but did have a good number of moments I really wanted to try to bypass, but ultimately couldn't. The opening Predator section went surprisingly great, no grapples to speak of, though I did get pretty shot up in the process. It is a big arena and there are a lot of enemies here, so it didn't exactly go the absolute best. But that doesn't really matter because we now have our first required grapple of the challenge. There's no way to get up to the foreman except by grappling. There's no stairs or ladders up to his position and Robin doesn't have a line launcher, so that's out of the question. All we can do is grapple up to the grate onto the walkway and take our walk of shame as we add a grapple to the count. But it doesn't end there folks, oh no. We still have to add one more for this pack. 
This little puzzle here has us going down a chute to prime a wall with explosive gel, then grappling back up to eventually blow up a minigunner, then take the other two guys down with fear multi takedowns. Unfortunately, there's no way around grappling up the chute. Believe me, I tried a bunch of different ways to take these other two guys out, but you just can't get past those turrets. At one point, I even got one of the thugs to follow me into the back room and was able to take him out there, but the other guy will not move from behind the turrets. And even if he did, there would just be no way to get around these turrets. The bullet shield is unfortunately useless here, completely failing at its primary function, I might add. It gets overwhelmed way too quickly by the turrets, so you can't disarm them. I even tried this really convoluted plan where I disabled the back turret and tried timing a zip kick when the other two turrets were spread apart, but they and the enemy just focused on me too quick. There might be a way to do this without having to grapple up the chute, but I certainly can't pull it off if so. That said, those are the only two grapples in this pack, as the rest can play out as normal. So that's already three packs down and only one to go in just a few minutes. How bad could this last one be? I'm only two pages into this script and probably about four minutes into the video. You can guess what that means. You either spread your wings and fly, or hit the ground and die. To absolutely nobody's surprise, the hardest pack for this challenge was none other than Matter of Family. All the other packs took me probably 30 minutes or less. In total, I only spent an hour on the other three combined. Matter of Family took nearly two and a half hours. And all that effort and time spent doesn't even matter because I still ended up with a ton of grapples. Even more than Arkham City and all the challenge maps combined. That's how bad this went. Let's start the counting right away. There is no way around these cable cars to get up into the park. There's nothing for the line launcher to attach itself onto and Batgirl decides that she just can't glide because of the high winds. Too windy to glide. I shouldn't glide with this wind. Not a good idea. So we need a whopping 10 grapples just to get up to the park. It should be noted that I technically avoided a few grapples using some respawn shenanigans, but I don't really count these as avoiding them. I don't know if that goes against a precedent I sent in a different no grapple video, but I'm making the choice here that this doesn't count as avoiding a grapple. I mean, all I did was fall off into the water and Batgirl decided to spawn here instead of where I left off. It doesn't feel right to me, so I'm counting all the grapples that would have been necessary to get up to the park. Plus, I mean, you hear a grapple sound when the fade to black happens, so that's why I'm counting it. I shouldn't glide with this wind. And those cable cars are not the end, not by a landslide as we still need four more with this crane to get inside the back rooms of the park and take out these henchmen. Three on the outside and one to go up this vent. Batgirl technically uses a fifth when she leaves the vent to get onto this pole, but I'm not going to count that since it's out of my control. Does that contradict the rules above? I don't care, moving on. Because now we come to the first avoided grapple of the story. This little ledge is just too high to climb, so it's time to go back to our old Arkham City friend, Line Launcher Shenanigans. This should be fun. It took a bit of doing, but I eventually found a way to actually make it work. First, we stand on these sandbags for a bit of extra height, then aim as close as possible to the side of this boxy area without actually going over it. Launch and tightrope, then climb onto it. Then launch and tightrope again at a bit of an angle to the ledge, and you should be able to glide right into it and climb up. A good start, but not nearly the end of my suffering. Because unfortunately, following that nice display of ingenuity is a narrow hallway with absolutely no ledges and a hole we need to grapple through. There's nothing we can do, so don't even bother trying. Where we do need to bother trying is the very next room, which was one of the most difficult but satisfying no grapple puzzles I've had to solve so far. We have two individual sections of great difficulty ahead of us, and I was somehow able to get through both of them without a single grapple. Except for experimentation purposes, but those don't count. First area, we've got this mostly empty room with a hole all the way up here. One would think this is impossible. That one was me, and he was wrong. First and most obviously, get on these junction boxes and line launch off of them. Then use the strange geometry of these vents to stand where you absolutely shouldn't. 
As you'd expect, launch and tightrope again. Then, for some reason, just glide into this corner and you'll climb up. I think it has something to do with the little side jump I had Batgirl do here. Normally, this makes you lose height, like anything gliding related would. But here, I think it gives me just enough height to make the game overwrite the action with climbing. So that one was a bit cheesy, but I'll take a free win. Area 2 is not so generous. Ironically, we have a much more crowded, prop-filled room, but have a much harder time and a larger reliance on cheese. These vents here are just out of reach because they aren't a climbable prop like you'd expect. Even gliding directly into it doesn't let Batgirl climb it, it's basically just a wall. However, there is an interesting quirk of this area and the one below it that I was able to take advantage of. This specific wall has some very strange geometry in that it acts like a railing. It makes absolutely no sense, but I don't care because it's useful. Well, partially. Unfortunately, railings are not so helpful when your only means of gaining height requires you to be standing on solid ground. So I was left just kind of jumping around for a while trying to think of what to do. And then I stumbled upon this. These railings are wide, which means you can land on them at different depths. If you land on it at a specific point, you can then edge yourself free by crouching under the beam and just kind of wiggling around a bit. The most consistent way to accomplish this is to hang from the ledge, go all the way to the corner, and then climb up. By wiggling carefully enough, you can wedge yourself free from the beam and stand up like normal on solid ground, allowing you to pull out the line launcher. You can then launch and tightrope high above these vents, letting you jump onto them. Congratulations, you're halfway done. Now climb up as high as possible on this beam and tightrope to eventually glide onto these pipes. These thankfully don't act as beams, so we can stand on them and use them effectively. Carefully get yourself into a position you can launch from, then do what you know to do. Then fall down like an idiot and ignore the last two steps entirely. Don't even bother with the pipes, just launch alongside the hole, get ready to glide, then for some reason decide to climb up despite not being given a climb prompt. Frankly, I don't care how, but I'm sure the pipe strategy would have worked just fine as well. I couldn't care less because I'm already through 40 minutes of footage and I'm not even in the park yet. Most people were done with this pack by then. Oh, speaking of, there's still one more roadblock stopping us from entering the park. This tiny ledge with absolutely no ability to line launch. This was the prime example from the city days of ledges we couldn't get around except by the line launcher, and that's completely stripped away from us here. Don't worry though, we have more wedging shenanigans. Just keep wiggling against the wall and pressing A when the climb prompt shows up, and you'll eventually be allowed to climb up and enter the park. Consistency? Never heard of it. This is the Clown Puncher 139 channel. We pray to Arnon Jesus on this channel instead of manipulating AI like a sensible human being. Bad joke over, we now move on to rescuing some hostages, starting with by far the most annoying one, the Ferris Wheel. Since we start at a high point in the park, we can just glide down to the tower to take one of the snipers out. Unfortunately, the game decides that this area is now blocked off, meaning we can't leave once we engage the enemies. And this is a problem because it means we can't get to this other sniper tower. Batgirl will just turn her glide around if we try to go to this other building to gain some height, so we're completely locked inside the area with absolutely no way to gain significant height. At most, you might be able to reach the vantage point, but even that's not a guarantee. And it's not like that'd be very useful. There's nothing to line launch off of at the top of the tower, so no way to reach the other side. Basically, we can get one sniper by gliding down from the top of the park, but we have to grapple up to the other one. Thankfully, the rest of the section doesn't have this problem, and we can take out every other enemy with hacking or silent takedowns, not adding any other grapples to the tally. After that, we have to go to the Great White Shark attraction to disarm a bomb. It took me an unnecessarily long time to make my way over there because the entrance just so happens to be quite high off the ground. How I inevitably made it was by going over to this decently far off area and launching towards the ride. I then tightroped and made a perfect glide to the corner of this platform, which Batgirl thankfully decided to climb. Then a nearly pixel perfect line launch into this pillar let me tightrope and climb onto this sign. After a little bit of wiggling to get just the right angle, I was able to climb onto the track and enter the shark mouth, allowing me to beat up the thugs and disarm the bomb. Now we go to the spooky deep sea ride and realize I'm over an hour into this stupid challenge and not even halfway done with this story, by god someone help me. First though, actually getting to the ride. 
It's not hard because there are stairs leading up to it, and I made it needlessly complicated with a bunch of gliding and line launches. Taking down the thugs on the boat was a little difficult, but nothing too bad because this area is pretty open with a lot of different holes for me to climb through. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for getting into the ride. We're supposed to climb this crane and use the cargo to smash the entrance open. But to do that, you first need to actually climb the crane. It took a bit of doing and ingenuity, but I was eventually able to find a way up. The problem was that the crane itself doesn't have a launch hitbox. So what should be an easy launch onto the crane platform turns into a wild chase to find something high enough to glide down to it. I at first tried climbing the giant exhaust pipe at the top of the ship, but that ultimately proves fruitless as it's just way too tall. However, you can launch into this pole on the ship, which for some reason gives you enough height to climb it. Who cares about logic anymore? You can then stand perfectly in the center of the mast to ignore the rail walking and land launch into the big pipe. This gives just enough height to glide right onto the crane and use it to open the ride. Now the ride itself. First we take down some thugs, nothing new there. Then we get to the predator section. Or we would, except that we need to grapple up here to actually get inside. Despite these boxes being at the perfect height to let Batgirl climb, she decides that she just doesn't want to do that. But we can do something completely convoluted to get up. We can of course climb on the boxes and use the launch and tightrope to gain some good height. Then just throw yourself at the wall until Batgirl decides to climb up. Yeah, I don't know what happened here, but I guess these two walls were close enough to the point that the game decided my going back and forth was actually gaining height. As usual, say it with me, I don't really care. I avoided a grapple, so it doesn't really matter. What I do care about is this predator section. I completely failed the first time I did it, but the second went really well. Unlike the ferris wheel, the sniper isn't in a completely inaccessible spot. So even though he was pretty annoying and taking pot shots at me, it didn't really matter because I could at least get up to him. The rest of the guys were taken down using a combination of the environment and the one and only, the tried and true, the absolute king of no grapple predator rooms, the greats. Overall pretty easy. And now it's time to leave the attraction and yet another instance of needing to grapple. And to avoid it, you start by casually running up the wall. Despite the steep slope, you can actually get decently high before it stops you. Launch in tightrope, then glide to this small area. Walk outside the little hole to a place you can launch again, then just kind of glide around until you end up here, slightly higher than where you can normally make it up the wall. Launch in tightrope again, then glide over this ledge, since the one right next to you won't let you up. Then do it one more time and glide right to the final ledge to climb up and get jump scared. This one was really fun to figure out because of the wild geometry of the area, and I'm so glad I was able to avoid it. I was a little surprised the game didn't break though, as I thought the jump scare would have been caused by grappling up the ledge, but I guess not. And with that, we can exit the attraction with a grapple. Yeah, sorry, there is no conceivable way around this, and even if there was, it certainly wouldn't be possible within the small time limit the game decided to arbitrarily throw onto disarming this bomb. So, add another grapple to the tally. After that, it's a pretty simple run to the park entrance to disarm the bomb. Everything is thankfully on the ground, so there's nothing blocking our path except for a few thugs. But even those can thankfully just be run around. After a quick defusing and thug beatdown, we now have the problem of escaping this little arena. Thankfully, we have a bunch of pointless geometry we can exploit crammed into the corner here. Start by slamming yourself against these boxes until they decide to let you up, then set yourself up on these little pipes. Launch in the single spot the game allows you, tightrope and glide onto the gondola. Then one more launch into the wall will let you climb up and escape. Just one more set of hostages to go, and they're thankfully right here by the entrance. So we can just climb right up, beat up some thugs, set the cops free, and oh dear, we still have to escape. The game decided that despite being surrounded by solid walls, you can't line launch anything in this little arena. So we're trapped except for one little bumper car against the wall. You can wiggle your way onto it, then do a roll to make your way on top. This gives you more than enough height to climb up the wall and escape. Now we just need to head up to Joker and defeat him, right? Well, we still have two roadblocks stopping us from doing so. And unfortunately, this tiny ledge is impossible to get around without grappling. There's nothing you can line launch onto and no weird geometry to take advantage of. It's super annoying, but we need to add one more to our tally right before the finale. Thankfully, we don't need to add two, as this seemingly impassable ledge is actually able to be conquered. 
Start by launching and climbing this little light here. This gives by far the most height for starting launch. Then wiggle your way around until you're for some reason given the ability to launch straight ahead. Tightrope and you're given the perfect height to jump right to the ledge and meet Robin. Then we can go beat up Joker and Harley and the pack is won. This was an incredibly fun challenge but an extremely grapple heavy one at that. As we had a whopping 18 grapples in this single story pack. Granted 10 of them were the long trek up the gondola but the point still stands. So no, it is not possible to beat these specific story packs of Arkham Knight without grappling. You can beat Red Hood and Nightwing just fine, but Robin requires 2 and Batgirl requires a whopping 18, bringing our total grapples for this challenge to a clean 20. That's nearly double the number of Arkham City, but this certainly made for a fun challenge nonetheless. Congratulations Arkham Knight, you finally gave me a difficult and fun challenge. Only took you three tries and hours upon hours upon hours of painfully slow footage over the years, but you finally done it. Give yourself a big, long, slow round of applause. Jokes aside, I'm very glad I finally had fun with the night challenge, even if it wasn't in the base game. I wouldn't recommend trying these for yourself since I already gave you all the solutions, but if you can find a way to debunk anything I said was impossible, feel free to do so. When it comes to stuff like this, I love being proven wrong, so link me your videos doing so in the comments. All that said, do all the YouTube stuff because analytics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps. Fine. What was that? A bad joke. Joker tends to make a lot of those. He's about to make his last one. <laughs>